Good morning, friends. It is a beautiful day to get some work done on the farm. My um, youngest son, Chance, is coming home and bringing his girlfriend home. For about a week, they're going to be here. And I want to get a lot of this hard work going so that when they come home, I don't have to work so much and we can enjoy our time together. So I've got a lot I want to get accomplished today and tomorrow. Good morning, champ. Hey, buddy. Everybody's hollering at me this morning to come feed them and give them their morning love. But I thought it would be fun to bring you guys along with me and we'll kind of tour the garden and tour the farm as I work. Arrow's got this cough. He's been coughing now for about two weeks. So him and Mr. Bo is going to see the vet today. Bo was disbudded when he was a baby and his horns are growing back and curving into his head. And I don't even know what to do about that. So he's going to the vet today. And Mr. Champ needs to go to the vet today and get some vaccines. So that is going to be a uh, interesting adventure. I'm going to try to load both goats up in the pet carrier in the back of the truck. And I'm gonna put Champ in the back seat of the truck. And Chase and I are going to attempt to take all these guys to our vet today. It's gonna be crazy. Y'all ready to eat? Come on. Y'all ready to eat? Are y'all ready to eat, babies? Are y'all hungry? Huh? Is everybody hungry? Okay, so I'm gonna start in the protege garden and I'm just gonna walk through bed by bed and assess what all I need to try to get done today and tomorrow. And these are my sweet potatoes. They're looking really, really good. I came back and sowed some sunflower seeds in between the rows of sweet potatoes and they're coming up. They're starting to come up right there. So I think that'll be really lovely sunflowers popping up out of this sweet potato vine. I need to come in and do a little bit more pruning. I see some suckers and I need to tie those to the wire. It is starting to bloom. So I'll be harvesting some of those sweet little borage flowers. They taste like cucumber. They have a little bit of a cucumber flavor. I like to put them in salads. But look at this butternut squash in here. Oh yeah. They're growing. We're gonna have a lot of these. There's my nasturtiums. Aren't they pretty? I love that cherry nasturtium. So in my squash hills, I do companion planting. I like to plant nasturtiums and I plant radishes but the ones that haven't been harvested that I've left in here, I'm just letting them go to seed. And that attracts all kind of beneficial insects. So in each hill, I've got my radishes, nasturtiums, and then my squash plant. Oh, look at this spaghetti squash. I'm trying to creep out of the bed. Pick that up very carefully put that back in the garden or else it will get weed eated the sunflowers are coming up look at there some little ladybugs on here taking care of insects for me.
I shared with y'all a few weeks ago about how sunflowers are trap crops for stink bugs. And look here, there's stink bugs on the sunflowers, little baby stink bugs. For some reason, the stink bugs seem to prefer the sunflowers. So, it becomes a trap crop. The stink bugs love these squash too. Squash, tomatoes, they love them. And they're going to these sunflowers first. So, I'm going to come in here and see if I can take care of them before they decide to go to my squash. Look in here at these nasturtiums and radishes. Ah, they're so pretty. I love having flowers pop out of my vegetables. Here's my grapes, which are doing wonderful. I've got so much fruit setting on here. Look at those just loaded. I'm trying to keep them watered really well so that the fruit will develop and we'll have nice, big, delicious grapes on here. It's climbing over this arch really, really pretty. I can't wait to walk under this arch with just clusters of grapes. It's gonna be awesome. In this circle bed and that circle bed right down there. I had my olive trees in them. And I got sad news. This past winter, we had a low freeze for us here in Alabama. It got down to like below 14, I think it was. I can't quite remember, but it got really low. And the olive trees that I was growing here, the Arbaquina olives, they can take temperatures down to 17. So it got below that. So I had my olive trees in my big green containers and I moved them to my garden shed thinking that would be enough protection and it wasn't. My garden shed is not insulated or anything so it got really cold in there and it actually killed my olive trees. I went ahead and put them in the ground at, at this early spring because I thought they might come out of it. And this one right here is trying to. It's still alive, but it's so tiny. I think I'm gonna just uh, dig it up, put it in a container, grow it up, and I'm going to get me two more olive trees from Petals, the bigger, taller size, whenever they get them in. I'm gonna go up there and get me two more and replace these. And then if we get below 17 again, I'm just gonna make like a little PVC pipe structure over it and cover it with some winter. I tried winter to take the measures to protect my olive trees, but I didn't take the right measures. So I'm really sad about that because I'm really stoked about having big, cool, gnarly olive trees in the middle of my potage garden here. They're symbolic in a whole lot of different ways and I really want them here. I just noticed on my grape leaves here on the new growth, there's some aphids. Aphids like new growth. There they are. And I've got some white flies on here. All on this one stem. I don't really see any more evidence of, the, of this anywhere else on the grapes. Mostly just this one stem is just infested with it. So I think I'm just going to cut this off, throw it in some soapy water and kill them, mix up my neem oil and just come through and really inspect and spray any areas that I see it. I wish I saw some evidence of ladybugs on the leaves, knowing that they were, you know, taking care of them for me. But I, I want to go ahead and uh, remove this link, this stem and get some neem oil and just hit any spots that I see. I'm gonna go through and really check under the leaves and try to get control of them. While I have my neem oil mixed up, I'm gonna go ahead and spray those stink bugs too. The neem oil with pyrethrins in it is my go-to because it's insecticide, fungicide, and miticide. But we do have to remember that it also kills any beneficial insects. So I want to just make sure that I'm only hitting 
the bad guys. I'm not gonna go through and spray my whole entire plant. I'm just gonna address each area where the problem is because I don't want to risk killing off any of my beneficial insects. Now this is my cabbages and I've got a little bit of cabbage worm, cabbage moth and cabbage worm damage, but not too bad really. They don't look that great. It's getting too hot for these cabbages. So I think I'm just gonna go through and harvest all of them. Even though a lot of them are just small baby cabbages, I'm just gonna go through and harvest them all because it's just getting too hot. We're in the 90s here in Alabama now. Just like overnight, we're in the 90s. So I'm gonna go through and harvest all these and cook some fresh cabbage and I'm gonna try fermenting some. These are the white, red, and yellow potatoes. And I've been looking at it going, dang, something's wrong with my potatoes. They're just dying off and not looking good. But then I realized it's time to harvest them. They're ready to be harvested. They've been in the ground since February. So it's February, March, April, May, 30, 60, 90. They're 100, they've been in the ground 120 days already almost. So they're ready to be harvested. So I'm gonna check them right now and let's just see if they are ready to be harvested. Oh yeah. Yeah, they could stand to get just a little bit bigger. So that's good too, because Chance is bringing his girlfriend with him this week, whom I love. She is so sweet and so precious and I love her. He's bringing her home with us this week. Jean hasn't met her yet. Jean and Chase haven't met her yet. I got to meet her when um, I drove back to you when I rode back to Utah with him. I got to spend the day with her and hang out with her then. So I've got to meet her and I love her. Jean and Chase haven't, so this is gonna be fun. She's gonna come home a chance for spend a few days with us and get to know each other. And she said that she wanted to spend some time with me in the garden and learn all she could learn. And she's also gonna get in the bees, so that's gonna be fun. But um, I think if we give these one more week, by the time they come home, we'll be harvesting these things. So that'll be a fun job for me and her to do together. This year is just going by so fast to me. Like, it feels like I just planted these potatoes. I kiss, it's just got away from me. I can't believe it's already time to be harvesting them. It's fun, fun stuff. These are heir all my heirloom tomatoes. And I discovered last night that dang little armadillo is back in my garden. You can see where he's kind of been digging. Well, he had holes dug around my plants. So I went through last night and tried to cover all my plants back up that he dug around. That darn armadillo last year tore up a bunch of my beds, destroyed a bunch of my potatoes and just wreaked havoc out here. And I found this product called Armadillo Scram and it worked. I put it out and it worked. So um, I'm hoping I've still got some in my shed. If I don't, I'm gonna pick some up today and get it in this garden. And that brings me to a very good point, you guys. The garden needs us. As a gardener, as a caretaker of the garden, we need to be out here every day, walking through the garden, looking, assessing issues, seeing what the problems are, and trying to catch them before they turn out to be a catastrophe. Just like my grapes over here, I found the aphids and the white flies and they're just on one stem. So I can just go in and remove that one stem and hopefully keep control of that problem without having to come in and spray some toxic chemical or pesticide to, to keep control of that, which will in turn kill all my beneficial insects and totally disrupt the whole healthy ecosystem that I'm trying to develop and create out here. It's really hard 
for us to grow vegetables and fruit in the South organically because there's so many pest and disease issues here. So I think the biggest practice that a gardener can do to grow vegetables at all, period, and fruit is to be present in your garden. You see how these leaves are curling up on my tomato plant? That's called tomato leaf curl. And that can happen for a number of different reasons. And there's all kinds of different tomato leaf curls. One that like curls up and in like this. And there's one that curls under where your leaves curl under. And there's one where your little new growth, where your, um, where your fruit setting curls. This one's not doing it. The only problem I have on here is the leaf curling up. Now, when it's doing, when it does this, I want to look at it and make sure there's no kind of worm in there making a cocoon. Because when there's a worm or something like that, insect, a lot of times they'll bury up inside the leaf and then cause it to curl in and make like a cocoon for its shelter. First, you want to look at that and see if there is a worm, caterpillar, insect, whatever in there. If there's not, which there's not on mine, I've already looked at all of them, then more than likely it is just an environmental issue. So that means that it's either not getting enough water or it's getting too much water or it's wind because of the wind. And last week we had three or four days in a row of just really windy, breezy days. It was really nice for us but it wasn't so great for my tomatoes. They didn't like it. So I believe the reason they're curling up like this is a combination of the wind and maybe just not enough water. So that's really nothing. I, I really don't have to do anything about that because that's just an environmental issue. It's not gonna kill my plant. It's just those older leaves. It's a way that they protect themselves. Now, if it's curling under or if the little, the um, where the fruit and the bud and all that is, if that starts curling or there's an insect inside the leaf, then that's when I need to start addressing things because it could also be an issue of too much water or it could be uh, a nutrient deficiency. So there's a lot of reasons why the leaves on the tomato plant curls but when it's curling up and doing what mine is doing without an insect making a cocoon in there or without any kind of evidence of insects, it's just an environmental issue. Let's see, my tomatoes are looking pretty good though. Looking pretty good. They definitely need to be tied up. I've got some fruit setting. I believe this one was Cherokee purple, I think. look here now this is pretty much my cool season bed all of these cool season vegetables do not like this heat that we have just come into it has just started turning really hot here in Alabama and they're not liking it at all but I do have some broccoli in here look at there I got some little broccoli heads forming that's exciting. I'll at least get a little bit of harvest out of this. And these are my Brussels sprouts. And I see little baby Brussels forming on the stalk here. Hopefully you can see them. They're starting to form. Now, I'm hoping that they're actually going to have time to form and make me some Brussels sprouts before it gets too hot. There's some right there too. I hope I actually get some Brussels sprouts. I love roasted Brussels sprouts. I don't know, it's kind of a risk planting these kind of vegetables um, in the spring for us. We really do better in the fall and winter because our springs are usually so short lived and it gets hot so quickly that you're really kind of gambling when you plant these vegetables in the spring. But any harvest that I can get off of these things is welcomed. This is all cauliflower. I had some purple cauliflowers. <gasps> Look! Look at my purple cauliflower. 
I can harvest this. We can go ahead and be harvesting this. Yay, look at that cabbage moth. Yay, do I have any more? Oh yeah, there's a baby one in there. All right. Exciting. And look at all these carrots back here. I'm gonna harvest all these too. I think I'll wait on Renee and we'll harvest these together. Maybe we'll eat them while they're here. These are the onions that I planted this fall. And really what I should have did, and I never took the time to do it, is I should have come in, moved my soil away from the bulb like this. And that helps them to get bigger, to be a bigger onion. And I didn't never do that, so they're not as big as they could have been. And they're getting about time to harvest. I think they could stand to be in the ground a little bit longer. What I've been doing is just coming in and harvesting them as we needed them. But I think it's, um, it's not gonna be long and I might have to get in here and harvest all of them. These onions here are the onions that I planted this spring. And they're gonna do okay. They're probably not gonna do exceptional. They don't like our heat. But I do need to come in here and kind of move my soil away from all of them a bit so that I can try to get a bigger onion like that. This is my lettuces and carrots that I've been that we've been eating out of for weeks now. It's been our dinner every night or lunch salads. I've so enjoyed it and I hate to see them go. I love fresh lettuce from the garden. You can see these starting to bolt and they're getting bitter. I harvested some of these for dinner the other night and they're a little bit bitter. Maybe these younger ones might still be pretty good. I'm just gonna salvage what I can and try to make us a few more salads and meals out of them and then these carrots. I've been eating these like crazy. I just come out here and pull me some out and it's my little garden snack. They're not very big because again they like cool season, cold. They do not like our hot that's going on. But that is a great carrot to snack on. And it's been really good in our salads. Yum. I remember when we lived in our old house and we had a little garden, the very first time I grew carrots and I pulled a carrot out of the earth and I ate it right there in my garden. It really was a life-changing moment for me because that's when I realized this is what I wanna be doing. I want to be growing as healthy, organic, and as natural good food as I can for my family. And I'm excited that my chase is getting into the garden and the farm with me and he and i'm seeing his face light up when he digs a potato out and when he pulls a carrot out of the ground and when he picks a sugar snap pea off of the vine and eats it and loves it that is like <laughs> that just brings me so much joy to see his face light up and to see him get so interested in growing this food and in farming and gardening with me and I'm so excited that Renee's coming out here with Chance next week. And I'm hoping we can make it a little bit of a family affair where we can all harvest potatoes and carrots together. And you never know, maybe a seed will be planted in Renee or maybe even Chance that they would like to grow their own garden and grow their own healthy food. I love sharing my garden experiences and any little bit of knowledge that I do have. I love sharing it with everybody. And just to see my family enjoying it too and absorbing from it is really bringing joy to my heart. These tomatoes are doing pretty good. They need some pruning done to them and they need to be tied. So I gotta work on that. This garlic is beyond time to harvest. Like some of the stalks are just completely gone. I've got to get out here and harvest this garlic. This is my squash and zucchini bed. And sunflowers. 
And I've got cucumbers planted to go up these trellises. Really not a whole lot to do in here. We're just at the point of harvesting a lot of squash. I've got two baskets full in the house. These sugar snap peas, we've been eating these a lot. Just coming out here and picking them and snacking on them and adding them to my salad. So I've got my kale, collars, cilantro that's gone to flower and seed. My onions, these were fall onions, so these are getting ready to come out. Turnip greens, mustard, starting to go to flower there though. Peppers are coming. I got little peppers on some of these. Over there's all the rutabaga. We've never went back and thinned out the rutabaga. But my rutabagas aren't going to be as big as they could have been. See, they're kind of small. I don't know. I've never really used one when it was this small. I think I might try to roast it tonight and see if it's any good. These scarlet runner beans are coming up and looking pretty. They're doing good. Here's my Tulsi basil. It's doing really good. Look at all my wildflowers. Ooh, look at this clary sage. Ooh, isn't that a pretty color? like a pale lavender and limey green color. That is beautiful. Look at all my poppies. Gosh. Look how pretty these poppies are. Wow. Aren't those beautiful? There's some uh, corn flowers. Lots of poppies. Ah, oh, they're so pretty. My roses are pretty. This is Hansa. My Ragosa rose. Look at these calendulas. Oh yeah, I'm getting a lot of calendula flowers. I've been harvesting them and drying them. Look at this echinacea. This thing is so stinking pretty. Look at the colors. So vibrant and beautiful. I can't even remember which one this was. This is one that I grew from seed. I'm sure it's in my book. I'll have to look it up and see because I know you guys are going to want to know the name of this beautiful coneflower, Echinacea. Gosh, it's beautiful. Basie's Blueberry Rose. Look at all of the pollinators on this guy. So this is on my list for in the morning. I need to get out here and harvest some comfrey and harvest more calendula flowers. I like to do it early in the morning because that's where, when the concentration of the essential oils is in there really good in the morning time. So look at all these calendulas. Wow. Woo, I need to get these. I need to get these harvested. Look at that comfrey. Look at all the pollinators on the comfrey. Oh, they love it. That is my Anna's hyssop. Y'all look at this coneflower in here. Isn't 
not pretty. Can't remember the name of it either. I'll have to go look it up. There's some little baby marshmallows and some baby whorehounds in here that I just planted. And I planted about five of these back here toward the back because they're gonna get fairly big. This is red zinger hibiscus, which makes a great tea. When we were in Guatemala, every day they served us Rosa de Jamaica, which was hibiscus tea, and it was really good. So I'm hoping to be able to make some tea out of that. Here's some baby toothache plants and some baby mullions that I put in the ground. This is my marshmallow getting ready to bloom. And this rose is Katie Road Pink. So we've kind of walked all through the garden here. Assessed everything that I need to get done in the next two days, which is pretty funny. Just gonna do what I can do, one bed at a time, and enjoy what I'm doing. So let's get to work. I've turned our little grow station here that we got this winter with our grow lights and everything. I'm turning it into, for right now, just a place for our vegetables to cure, like our onions, potatoes, and all of this garlic I just harvested. So this is working pretty good. Find any? Yeah, a couple. y'all it's late and I got as much done out here as I could get done I had to go in and get cleaned up a little bit so that we could get champ and the goats to the vet thank God it's late when the vet called me in Jean's home so he's, he's helping me get them loaded up and gonna go with me to take them but I wanted to run out here real quick and put out this diatomaceous earth and this armadillo scram this, I wanted to show you guys what it looked like, and it's made by Epic. It's, uh, maybe y'all can read that, Armadillo Scram. It's all natural ingredients. It's got castor oil, thyme oil, rosemary oil, white pepper, garlic oil, citronella oil, peanut holes, linseed oil, fish oil. I don't have my glasses on, but 
um, that's the ingredients in it. So it's all natural ingredients. And I'm just putting this out where that armadillo was. And hopefully this will take care of that little demon. It took care of him last year. It kept him away. So it says it's guaranteed to work. It worked last year. So I'm hoping it's gonna work this year. So I wanted to go ahead and especially make sure I got this put out tonight because I don't want that little demon out here destroying my garden again tonight. So I wanted to get this done before we take our animals to the vet. But anyways, thank you guys so much for working with me in the garden tonight. You guys have a blessed week and I'll catch you on the next video.